Hello everyone and welcome to today's little lab video where we're going to be going over the anatomy, not really the physiology, of vision, taste, and smell. So where all these you know, structures are located in the important structures in each. Uh, first one I want to go to is vision. So we have the accessory structures around the eye, including things like the eyebrows, the eyelashes, and the fissure here for your um, for blinking. Uh, when you blink, it moves the fluid over the eye and keeps it moist. So let's remove the skin here and look at the deeper structures of the eye. So first here we have the muscles. So this is the orbicularis oculi muscle, circular muscle that assists in the blinking mechanism. Uh, so let's hide that. We're gonna keep this one intact over here and slowly check out this one. Uh, I'm gonna also remove the skeletal system for now. Uh, so there, removing the skeletal system. Now we can start seeing all these structures around the eye. Let's hide the um, muscle there, let's hide the temporalis. And now we can focus on some of these other important eye muscles and glands. The first one here is the gland. This is the lacrimal gland. This is the tear producing gland. So it's on the superior lateral side of the eye orbit. So it releases the tear and then comes across the eye and then comes out the lacrimal fossa and then down into the nasal cavity. Uh, then, so if we add the skeletal system back, it comes right over here. That's called the lacrimal bone. There's a little uh, fossa in there, a little groove that can come down and exit through the nasal cavity. Uh, so now I want to focus on the muscles. There are six strap-like muscles around the eye. Uh, so here we have the superior oblique muscle. And then there's also an inferior oblique muscle. And then four wrapping around the eye. These are all named based on the movement they provide. So here the lateral rectus, if you imagine that contracting, moves the eye towards the lateral side. Inferior rectus, if that contracts, your eye looks inferiorly so superior rectus and then medial rectus this one up here then is the um, levator palpebrate superioris also assists in moving um, the eyebrows eyelashes and so forth uh, so let's hide that one uh, so those are the muscles that go around the eye now let's start looking at the structures of the eye so i'm going to remove one half as we go down through first the white of the eye is your sclera where light passes through so it's hide the sclera, it becomes the cornea. Cornea is the front portion of your eye. Uh, then we have your lens or, you know, your pupil. Uh, so we hide the lens there. This is then the iris. That's the part of your eye that becomes colored and from individual to individual. Uh, now you have the different humors in the eye too. The humor in the front or interior aspect of the eye is called the... Um, aqueous humor. Now here it's labeled uh, vitreous in both, but I'm not sure why this model did that, but typically it's called the aqueous humor in the anterior part here. Um, but another important part here, these, so here's the ciliary body. This connects to these uh, suspensory ligaments. Let's see if we can actually click one here. Um, so or they in this model, they call them zonular fiber, fibers. Um, or ciliary zonules or suspensory ligaments. So let's hide those. Uh, let's hide. So there's the vitreous body um, and there's the vitreous body, the lateral half. That's just removing the fluid. So inside you have the vitreous humor, outside you have the aqueous humor. Remember, the aqueous humor can refresh itself. Um, and it's part, an important part of that cycle. So let's remove the ciliary body here. That's the next layer down. And then this is the retina. Uh, everything back here includes photoreceptors. In the back here, Right there is where we have the optic nerve. So right there would be your blind spot. You can see the vasculature coming out of there. That's feeding the retina as well. Over here then, this little spot here is the part where we have the highest visual acuity or the most amount of cones. So this is called the macula densa. And in the middle there, we have the fovea centralis. That is the spot that's completely all cones. So when you're focusing on something in light, that's what you're looking at. And now this doesn't go into the microscopic detail, of course, of the retina and how the photoreceptors are located towards the backside. It doesn't show the pigmented layer and things like that. Um, but it does a decent job showing the general features here. And now as we move back, we then get to the optic nerve. Optic nerve runs back left and right side and crosses at the optic chiasm here. Optic chiasm is right below the hypothalamus back there. This is in the cella turquica of the sphenoid bone. And then if we follow the optic track going back, there are some branches it takes like going through the LGN, which is the lateral geniculate 
nucleus, suprachiasmatic nucleus, which is a nuclei in the hypothalamus, and so forth. We're not going to get through all that. Here I'm just showing how the optic tract goes back, all the way back to the back of the brain on the posterior side, and then vision is processed in the occipital lobe. So I just wanted to highlight that a little bit there for vision. So that's the general features of vision, um, going over the anatomy of it. Uh, next one I have on the list is taste. Uh, so taste down here all deals with the tongue. Uh, remember, you have the three different papilla on the tongue. So you have the foliate papilla, fungiform papilla, and valate papilla all have different taste receptors. Now, I can't go into the microscopic anatomy of a taste bud here, but you would you know, eat your chemicals and your food, sweet, sour, umami, bitter, and so forth. They would bind to the receptors of the um, cilia in there, and then gustatory hair cells are what they're called, and they then send a signal down through three different nerves, the facial nerve, the vagus nerve, and the hypoglossal nerve. Um, so those are all the cranial nerves running up through here. I know it's hard to see some of these nerves. Let's get the muscles out of the way. Hide all the muscles. And then we can see how, so like right there, um, the glossopharyngeal nerve, uh, that one is more important for, um, I guess, swallowing and speech, not so much taste, but three nerves go back for taste. Um, there's the hypoglossal coming on that side. Then there's the facial nerve, which branches in here too. I know this, this is a mess in here. Uh, but all these nerves then go back, these three nerves summate and go back. And then here there's the hypoglossal. Um, I know my eyes are in the way. Uh, there's where the facial nerve comes in. So the one branch of the facial nerve comes out and goes to the tongue. And then the other one then is the vagus nerve, which is somewhere deep in here. Right there is where it comes in. So all these come into serratus medulla oblongata, or the base of the pons. It uh, goes through a nuclei in there, then up and through the midbrain, and they actually get summated back in the insula. So that is taste. Uh, again, the physiology of taste was covered in the lecture portion. And now I just want to show smell or olfactory system. So, you know, smell happens in the nose, chemical dissolves in uh, mucus, and then moves up through the system. So let's hide some skeletal bones here and see if we can see these structures. So let's hide the lacrimal bone. Um, there's don't really want to hide the ethmoid bone. Uh, let's hide the frontal bone. So look at this. Uh, this is the ethmoid bone, and this is the cribiform plate of the ethmoid bone, and, bone, and there's the crista galli. Uh, so volatile chemicals come in, dissolve in mucous membranes, and then here are the olfactory tracts. So these are the olfactory nerve fibers running through these little holes in the cribiform plate right there, and they run down, and that's where we have the sen sensors down here. So they come up. These are bipolar cells coming up through to mitral cells or the glomeruli located in the olfactory bulb. Olfactory bulb then goes down the olfactory tract, so the left and right side, and it goes back down through to different regions and all the way back to the um, temporal lobe and insula back there. So that's olfactory tract, which is cranial nerve one as well. I just wanted to show how these nerve fibers go through that ethmoid bone. It's kind of neat how, you know, all those little holes in there that we learned about before in that cribiform plate come down into the top or the um, superior side of the nasal cavity, and that's how smell works. Now, in the lecture, we went over the details on how smell works and how you can smell and taste a bunch of different things, uh, so definitely refer to that. And yeah, so that's the, the little bit I wanted to go over here for 3D organon anatomy, showing the different anatomical features of vision, taste, and smell. Now, the next video I'm going to make is going to be sh going over the model of the ear. We can see that if we hide the skeletal system here, Right back here is the cochlea in the ossicles of the middle ear bones, and there's a tympanic membrane. But we have a good model in the laboratory that I want to use. I might refer back to this and look at the structures here um, using 3D organin. But that will be the next video. If you have any questions on this one right now, uh, please reach out to me. But if not, I hope you have a great day, and bye-bye.